Hello and welcome to part 2 of our input field exploits module. So I am working with a few assumptions here that you have a prerequisite knowledge of following tools and software. However, if you don't know or need to learn more about these tools and software, you can check out the resources mentioned at the end of this video. This is our module structure and we are on part 2 that is fuzzing. So before I move on to fuzzing, I would like to explain in brief the exploit development process flow. Now this process has six stages and it starts with identifying the vulnerability in our target software. To identify that we use a process called fuzzing wherein we send random inputs to the application and then observe how the application behaves. And if we identify any crash, then we see if that crash can be exploited or not. The next step is to replicate the crash that we had found in the fuzzing process. To do that, we use the results from the fuzzing process and create a POC or proof of concept to replicate that crash. Now, once we have our proof of concept or initial POC ready, we move forward to controlling the execution flow of the application. By this, I mean that we move forward to gain the control of the instruction pointer CPU register. Now once we have gained the control of EIP or the instruction pointer, we then identify any bad characters that might affect the execution of our payload shell code. Identification of bad characters is necessary to eliminate any hex characters that might change the meaning of our shell code and hence render it unuseful or unexecutable. Now once we have identified the bad characters, we then generate a shell code. Again, depending on your expertise, you can either use a tool such as MSF Venom or you can write a custom shellcode also. Then we integrate this shellcode into a POC and fire that POC against a target application and obtain a shell from that application. Moving on to the fuzzing process. So as I said earlier that in fuzzing, we send random inputs to the application and check for any unexpected behavior of the application. And then we find a way to exploit these exceptions or crashes. Now there are different types of fuzzers. They are mutation based fuzzers and generation based fuzzers. In mutation based fuzzers, you provide a sample to the fuzzer and then the fuzzer mutates the contents of that sample and generate new test cases. In generation based fuzzers, you provide a sample to the fuzzer and based on the sample, the fuzzer generates new test cases for fuzzing. Using the fuzzing process, you can fuzz a variety of targets such as environment variables and arguments, web applications and servers, file formats, network protocols, web browsers, in-memory or standalone applications. If you want to dive in details of the fuzzing process, do check out the book mentioned below. It's an excellent resource to understand the process of fuzzing and to learn and to learn about a variety of fuzzers available in the market. Our target software for this module is Microsoft Windows 7 SP1 x86 and on that we will be running Axe SSH version 4.2. Now there are multiple fields that might be vulnerable but we will be targeting the log file name field in this application for our exploit. So let's move to the lab now. I am on my Windows 7 machine and let me first launch the target application. So I will go to start and from that I'll select Axe SSH version 4.2 and in it I'll run telnet underscore ssh dot exe. Now I'll run immediate debugger and attach it to this exe file. So I'll go to file and attach and I'll select telnet underscore s as the process to which I want the immunity debugger to be attached to. Then I press attach. Then I'll press play to run the application. So now my application is running as you can see here. Now in order to first input fields in an application, I will first cover a manual way and maybe in a future module I will cover an automated way. Now in order to fuzz it manually, we will need a way to generate strings of various length so that we can copy and paste it and then test it if that string generates any crash or not. So for that purpose I have created
created a simple Python script here, which takes a file name called axe.sh.txt, creates a first string of 500 characters, then opens this file, writes this first string to this file, and then closes the file. So it's a very simple script and nothing complex here. So we'll save it and then I'll open command window or terminal. And this file is located on desktop in my machine. So I'll cd to desktop and then I'll give a command python axe.sh.py. Now, as you'll see, that this file is created on desktop. So I'm opening it in Sublime Text. And uh, so this is the file that we have just created of 500 bytes. Now I'll copy this string of 500 A's and go to my target application. Now this application might contain several fields which you might want to test for crash. So go ahead and test every field for a crash in this application. For a sample, I will just test two or three fields so that we we'll know when a crash occurs and when it does not occur. So for example, I'll first test this port field and uh, I'll paste the string here and let's press OK. So there was no crash here. So let's restart the application. Run the application. So now our application has started and let's first this field again. This time we'll send it a string of thousand characters. So we will just paste the copied string twice one and two and let's press OK to see if it crashes or not. So as you can see that this application has crashed on in this field and uh, however EIP has not been overwritten though EBP and EDI have been overwritten. So let's see if after passing this exception to the program does it overwrite SCH or not. To pass this exception to the program we press shift F9 and it says that debug program was unable to process exception. So that means this particular crash is not exploitable. So we will restart the application again. And run the application. And this time, let's remove this string of A from here and let's write 22 and let's first this host field so i paste a string of 500 characters here and press ok so you can see that again the application has crashed and an access violation has occurred and edi and ebp have been overwritten with 41 41 41 41 which is x for capital a and if i press shift f9 you can again see that this program was unable to process this exception. So that means even this crash is not exploitable. So let's restart the application again and run this application. Our application has restarted and our port field is filled with this string. Now I have tried multiple times to reset it to a port number but I have not been able to do that. If you face a similar problem, the workaround is to uninstall this application and install it again. So that is what I am going to do. So I am going to pause this video and I will be back once I have reinstalled this application. So after some trial and error, I was able to reinstall this application and get it back to its previous state. If you are facing any problems after uninstalling and reinstalling the application, Make sure that once you uninstall, you delete the root directory of Axe SSH, which is located in users, public, program files, and labf.com. So once you have uninstalled the application, make sure that you delete this directory and then reinstall the application. And when you reinstall it after that, the application will revert to its previous state or the original state. In a similar way that we first these two fields, you can first other input fields for this application. 
Now we will move directly to the field that we know is vulnerable to an exploit. So that field is a log file name which is located in the settings portion of this application. To go to that field, press details and then press settings and go to logging tab. And from here, select log all sessions output and in the log file name, paste the content of your clipboard, which is a string which contains 500 capital A's then press OK and press OK again to see if a crash has been triggered. So as you can see that a crash has triggered and this time EIP has been overwritten which is something we were looking forward to in previous crashes but we did not get. So this crash seems to be exploitable and you can also see that on ESP it says that the string is written so let's follow ESP in dump and you can see that we have a portion of our string here and if I just scroll this up a bit I can then see that there is a larger portion of the string that we had sent to this application just above ESP or just above the memory address to which ESP points. So probably we'll have to jump from this portion to the larger buffer portion, but that is something we'll do in a later part. So for now, let's see if we can increase this buffer length. To do that, I'll restart this application and run it again. And then in press details, again go to settings, logging tab, log all session output and in here I'll paste the contents twice which will make my string of thousand characters then I press ok and then ok again so as you can see that application has crashed EIP has been overwritten and let's see ESP if we have gotten a larger string or larger buffer so this portion seems to be similar or the same as previous and if I scroll up a bit so essentially there is no change here. So that means that we might face a problem of a limited buffer space and we might have to switch up our techniques from previous modules to a different one or to a different shellcode altogether. This is something we will cover in a later part. In the next part we will create a POC to replicate this crash. If you want to learn more about the tools and software that we are using in this module, please check out the resources mentioned here. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next part.